Hi there guys, it's Mike from MCQ Bushcraft here and welcome to another video. If you're getting interested in bushcraft skills or you're just spending more time outdoors doing things like camping and exploring the wilderness then knots are something you're going to come across. Whether you're using natural materials or man-made, knots are essential and they'll make putting up and taking down things very very quick and easy if you know the right knots to use. So in this video I'm going to show you all the knots that I use and I've also brought along with me a large tarpaulin, something I use for group shelters and I can show you those knots in context. Some terminology to understand first is that when the cord is looped over on itself like this, that's called a loop and when you put the cord together like this, so you don't actually cross the cord over but it just forms a U shape, that's called a bite. Loops and bites are used pretty frequently in tying knots, so it is important to be able to distinguish between them. But the first knot I'm going to show you is a really simple one. You'll see it used on a lot of equipment that I carry, and it's one that a lot of people have been tying for years, even though they may not know the name of it. I've got some 550 paracord here, and this first knot is called the overhand knot. We just create a loop like this, and we feed the tail end of the cord back through itself like that, and it creates a very simple knot, but very effective one also. You can even tie two pieces of cord together with the overhand knot. You can just double them up like this, create a loop, take the tail end, pass it back through the loop, and there you have the knot just there. But the type of cordage you use is important. This paracord's very grippy, and if I pull it apart like that, it doesn't come undone, but it's not the best knot to use for tying two pieces of cord together if they're being drawn in opposite directions like that. If they're being drawn down like this, then it's very effective and it will cause the knots to tighten. I use it for my neck knife, and you can see that I've actually put a bead just behind the knot. So what happens is, is when the cord's pulled apart, it's drawn downward in a linear direction through the bead, causing the knots to tighten, and you'll see it used again in the same context in my ferro rod, where it's being drawn through a leather toggle, and it can't come undone that way. Another knot that I use very frequently is the clove hitch, and the clove hitch is a really useful knot. There are two ways of tying it, really. One way of tying a clove hitch is by creating two loops, by going right over left, just like that, right over left again, so you've got two loops, just there, and then you go right under left, and then you can put it over the top of a peg, for example, like that, and pull on it, and it's a self-tightening knot, so no matter how much pressure I apply, it will not come undone. Another way in which you can tie a clove hitch is by running the piece of cord over the piece of wood, like this, or whatever you're tying it to, going over the top of it, to cross over like that, and when you come back round the other side, you take the tail end of the piece of cord and you go in between the crossover like this. And that creates the clove hitch that way as well. And this means that you can attach it to anything, regardless of whether you can get the loop over the top of it or not. To loosen the knot, you just go in the opposite direction of the other piece of cord, and the whole thing will just come off like that. Let's say you're stringing up a tarpaulin, you've got a ridge line and you're trying to go over to a tree, and the ridge line isn't long enough and you don't want to change location but you've got some more cord in your pocket you can extend the ridge line and get to the tree you want to get to. You need to tie those two pieces of cord together and there's a very simple knot for that. This knot's called a reef knot. You just go right over left like that so you're crossing over. Right under left just like that. And now this becomes the left hand piece of cord so you go left over right and left under right, just like that. And when you tie this down, or pull on it, it will constrict and bite on the two tail ends and it will not come apart. Another knot I'm gonna show you is the half hitch. And the half hitch is almost exactly the same as the overhand knot, except you're tying it around something um, instead of just allowing it to constrict on itself. But it's a useful knot for tying things off. And when you're putting up shelters or tarpaulins, you might need to tie an area off and the half hitch can come in handy just giving you that extra bit of security if you're there for long periods of time. The half hitch is a really simple knot. We just have the, the cord going over whatever we're tying it to. We come back over the top of the main line there with the tail end of the cord, go through itself much like an overhand knot and that is a half hitch. 
not a particularly strong knot on its own, but if you do two half hitches, it will generally bite very well and be useful for securing things down or just tying things off. And if we pull on that, it will just constrict on itself, it will bite to the tail end and it won't come undone. Another way of tying the second part of that, instead of putting the tail end through, we just put a bite through of cord and it creates a loop for us like that. And I haven't got a lot of cord to play with here so it looks a bit fiddly but if you've got a, a long piece of rope it's very easy. But if we pull on that now it bites very well and something I do every now and then is I use toggles and you can secure things off with toggles quite frequently and they just stop things pulling back through themselves but that will be incredibly strong and then when we no longer need it we just pull out the toggle, pull the loop, and it all comes undone very easily. But these are just some basic knots I've shown you, and what we're actually going to do now is get this tarp strung up, and I'm going to show you a lot of different knots that I use for stringing up tarps, and obviously show you how some of these knots I've shown you can come into play with a tarp all in. If I open this bag here, with the tarp in, the ridge line will be available straight away because of the way it's packed in, if you're interested in that have a look at the video in the description, but I'm going to string this tarp up quite low so I can show you the knots close up. But I take this out here, I'll have a loop on the end of this ridge line just here, and you can see that this is an overhand knot, two pieces of cord tied together, as we demonstrated earlier, to form a loop. To tie your first knot, it's very simple, you just take some slack, so we have the ridge line here, and this is the tail end with the loop on. We go over the top, and you just make sure you've got a nice amount of slack there. You come round like so. Obviously the bigger the tree, the more slack you will need, so pick a sensible tree. And we created a loop by going back round there, and we had a loop on the end of our ridge line. We go through, and then you take a, a stick off the floor, and that creates our first knot. And if you really want to tighten it down, you pull on it, you go back, pull on it, you go back again. And that's why I always named it the ratchet knot. I've not really seen it used anywhere, but it's just something I improvised. I'm sure it exists somewhere. And the nice thing about it is when you're finished, you just take the toggle out and it all just comes apart really, really easily and falls to pieces. So now that's fastened to the tree, you've hanked your cord correctly, it should just unravel like this. And this then brings you to the second tree you're tying your ridge line to, where you're going to tie a quick release knot. To tie this knot, you want to keep some tension in the ridge line, especially if you've got a large, heavy tarpaulin. So the friction of the cord on the actual tree will help you quite a lot. But you come round the tree and feed this through to get some tension on the line and then we come back over, back round again. And what that does is it really gives us a bit of tension on the line there. And then to tie the quick release knot, we come round like this with our two fingers. We twist once towards the tree and then we grab the tail end and we pull like that. And that is basically a quick release knot. So it's a very strong knot, it will not come undone. This ridge line is very taut, thanks to wrapping back round and creating these two knots. We've got a really good ridge line, even with a heavy tarpaulin like that. But there are ways of securing this, even though it won't come undone. If you're out here for quite some time, you might want to add some extra security here. Some simple ways of doing it would be putting a toggle in the loop. And that way it will never loosen. It'll only loosen very slightly with weather, but the knot won't loosen so much. And then if you want this to all come apart, you just take the actual toggle out and pull the loop and it will all come apart. Another way of doing it is, if you remember the half hitch we tied, we can just tie a half hitch like that. And that will strengthen the knot no end and it will not come undone at all. And when we want to loosen it, we just feed that back through. And if you obviously pull this, the whole thing comes apart and then we're ready to take down again. So it's a very effective knot for putting up and taking down. Now our tarp's hanging like this. It's already pre-connected to the ridge line. I always have my tarps like that. We can just take off the bag here that the tarp comes in and start 
spreading it out along the ridge line. And we've got some interesting knots on the ends here of the tarp. And this is called a prussic knot. And a prussic knot is a very, very useful knot. It's a friction knot, so when you pull this way, the knot tightens and it won't allow it to move. But when you take the slack off the knot, you can move it along like that. And it generally doesn't wear into cord. It's used for climbing as well. It's a, a really good knot and it works very effectively when you have a, a thinner cord on a thicker cord. If you have thick cord on thick cord, so the same type of cord, it generally won't grip as well. But we'll get this spread out and I'll show you how to do a prussic knot. What I'll do first of all is cut this loop just here so I can show you how to do it from the start. So I normally tie the tarpaul into the ridge line using a prussic knot. I have a piece of cord about this long. I double it over and I do an overhand knot. We did that right at the beginning and it creates a nice little loop for us like that. The loop goes over the top of the ridge line and then the back part of the loop with the knot comes through and then it wraps around again making sure all the pieces of cord are stacked very neatly within themselves and then it goes back through the loop again and then you pull very tightly like so and that is a prussic knot it's a very basic prussic knot and you can actually alter them quite drastically you can wrap around quite a few times create even more loops but what you'll notice is it doesn't feel very tight and it slides up and down the ridge line but when you apply pressure it will grip substantially and it will not move the same way it can go either way it will not move for you but when you need to move it it'll be really easy to slide around very useful knot to loosen it though it's really simple you just grab the loop and pull and the whole knot comes undone so we have a little tab here on our tarpaulin we have the prussic knot how do we attach it um, it's quite simple normally a lot of the time I just pull the tab through the prussic knot like that and I'll just get a toggle, usually a healthier bit of wood compared to this one, and that'll keep very tight, even in this wind. So we have the corner tabs of the tarpaulin. I normally just do another loop again. We talked about the overhand knot. We just take the loop, we thread it through, like so, and then we take the hanked up bunch of paracord and we pull it back through the loop. Now this is why you want to make the loop quite large, because or else you're faffing around, pulling a big hanked up piece of cord through. You just make sure the loop goes over the end of the knot, just like that. You can also use a toggle, like we used over there. Just put a toggle through, but it has more chance of coming undone. And if you pack your tarp away like me, I just have everything hanked up like that. This all gets stuff sacked in there, and then the ridge line gets hanked up and stuffed into the top. So it's just ready to go again the next time you need it. But we can walk this out now, and tie it off somewhere. So we'll just walk this out over here. We've got a nice spruce tree and this knot will allow us to adjust the tension of these lines if they slacken over time. And uh, it's a useful knot and it's called a tensioning hitch knot. We keep the line a little bit slack at first, we don't want it really tight. Bring this round, this is the tail end of the line. We go over the top like that and then underneath, like so. Around again, one, one more time. And then we take the tail end and we go underneath this back part here. And then what we can do to make this knot more efficient is actually, instead of just putting the whole tail end through, we just put a bite through and then tighten the knot up. So now we can just take the slack of the line up like that and that's looking good and it can be adjusted in the future which is nice and it will it will grip quite nicely for you and when you're happy with how it looks we just do another half hitch this is what I normally do just to secure things off like that you can even do two if you really want to but one is probably sufficient and that should be absolutely fine well guys I hope you found this video useful these are just some of the basic knots that I use, almost all of them really, all the ones I can think of anyway. There'll be plenty more out there and that the more you get into outdoor skills, the more knots you learn really. But I usually always stick to these ones. They're the ones that I turn to 
first when I'm doing various jobs and they're very easy to do and they're very quick to undo as well, most of them. And that's really the key with knots. I'm not saying that you need to learn these knots and they're the best knots for you. These are just the knots that I use. And the more time you spend outdoors, the more you'll adopt your own techniques, your own knots, and um, you'll, you'll really kind of get into the groove of your own methods out here when you're doing things. But you may be asking how you hank up cord. It's one thing I haven't shown you. If you take a piece of cord like this, you pinch it between your thumb and your index finger like that, and you go over the ball of your thumb like that between your two end fingers there, and then back over your thumb again. You can then part your hand because you're biting down on the tail end of that piece of cord, and you can just keep doing this. And really, when you get to about a meter or so length of cord there, you can bite this and take it off like that and start wrapping round and going back on itself. And then you can come back like this as well. It doesn't really matter how neat it is, if I'm honest, when you're doing it for things like tarps and stuff. If you were climbing, it's a little bit different, but then you end up with a nice hank of cord like that. And when you tie this to a tree, it can all be pulled and unravel like so, and it will just keep feeding out of itself like that. You know, it's a really efficient way of hanking cord, and it really goes hand in hand with what we've done today, which is why I've put it on the end of this video. So thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you liked the video. I hope it was useful. I'll see you very soon for another one. Take care.